Maya, Incas, Celts, Egyptians, and Basque. They each also produce similar systems of government, societal rules, class distinction, and a pyramidal social hierarchy. On the top of the pyramid were their bloodlines, and on the bottom were the slaves, peasants, and undesirables. If there was any social mobility, it was downward. Similar versions of this hierarchy were developed by civilizations all over the ancient Near East, such as in Mesopotamia, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and Egypt, as well as the Far East in China and India, in the Mesoamerican cultures of Mexico and Peru, and of course throughout the European empires. Now, the question is, who were these ancient rulers perched atop each of the pyramidal social hierarchies of antiquity? Well, available evidence shows that the ancient dragon bloodline royalty was primarily of Nordic Aryan stock, but who or what were the Nordic Aryans? Their name is derived from the Indo-European root word air, meaning noble. So the word Aryan, depending on where you look, is translated of noble birth or honorable, respectable, noble. They called themselves the noble ones or the superior ones. Aryans or white people are generally divided into three groups. These are the Mediterraneans, the Alpines, and the Nordics. Nordics, recognizable by their tallness, light hair and eye color and long skull, are the ones that most people are talking about when they speak of the archetypal Aryans. But there are also several different Nordic subtypes. The Borabi type, which have large square heads, brown or blonde hair, and light, mainly blue eyes. And the Bruns, who are also big-headed, but with frequent red-headedness and prominence of darker shades of brown with minimal blondism. But the Hallstatten Nordic is your stereotypical Aryan, being ash blonde, blue-eyed, tall and slender, straight and narrow-nosed, and relatively long-headed. Throughout history, the Nordic Aryans uh, seemed to be the real movers and shakers, and definitely the ones to watch. They were a tough, tribal, and nomadic peoples who were fierce and warlike, and their religion reflected this, dominated as it was by a sky god that enjoins warfare and conquest, commonly known as Zeus. For thousands of years, this race of warriors, sailors, pioneers, and explorers had poured forth from their Northland homes in conquering waves over Europe and many parts of Asia sometimes conquering peoples vastly superior in numbers by their fierce energy and then establishing themselves as their aristocratic ruling class and then perpetuating their rule with their political abilities. You see, the Nordic is at once democratic and aristocratic. Among his own kind, he is democratic, profoundly individualistic and touchy about his personal rights. Neither he nor his fellows will tolerate tyranny, but wherever the Nordic establishes himself among other races, he is extremely aristocratic. Feeling himself the ruler and the superior, he prides himself on his race and seeks to guard the purity of his blood. This is where racism comes from and why it will never completely go away. Throughout Europe today, the old aristocratic class tends to be of Nordic origin. Even in countries where the Nordic element has been mainly bred out of the population, what little Nordic blood remains is found chiefly concentrated in the old upper class families. There are many kinds of evidence to support the idea that Nordic Aryans were the primary ruling elite of many ancient cultures from around the world. In the Americas, the feathered serpent sky god, whom they all credited with giving them their cultures, was described universally as a white man with strong formation of body, broad forehead, large blue or emerald eyes, reddish blonde hair, and a flowing beard, dressed in a long white robe, reaching his sandaled feet, holding a staff, and sometimes having a jaguar at his feet. This white man whom the Incas called Contiki Viracocha and his merry band of white gods that they called the Viracocas were credited with building the ancient city of Tijuanaco before he and his assistants departed saying that they would return one day. Each civilization had a similar tale and depending on the location as to the reason why he left but regardless he always said that he would return one day. Centuries later when Francisco Pizarro appeared the Incas were an easy conquest due to the fact that they believed him to be one of these white gods. As did the Aztecs when Hernando Cortez appeared in Mexico with his conquistadors, they believed him to be Quetzalcoatl. The civilization of the Incas of Peru, like that of the Aztecs of Mexico, developed later than other ancient cultures, but their imperial forms of social organization had obviously been handed down for many generations. Incan society was tightly organized. At the head was the supreme Inca, who was considered a direct descendant of the sun. His rule was absolute. He was the head of state, commander of the armies, and the authority for all taxes and laws. 